The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, my name is Patty Hunter, and this is Patty's Page. Today I will be interviewing Ian Morrison, who is a spokesperson for the Friends of Canadian Broadcasting. And this is going to be an interesting half hour. He's Skyping with me all the way from Canada, Toronto, no less. So hopefully we'll have a good uh, conversation and please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. And this is Ian Morrison, our Friends of Canadian Broadcasting, or we can narrow it down to Friends. That's what it, they call themselves. So, good afternoon, sir. Patty, it's a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you for being on my show. Why was Friends formed and when? It was in the 1980s and uh, there was a new government in Canada headed by a, a conservative prime minister called Brian Mulroney. Oh yeah. And uh, despite uh, during the election campaign that he was victorious in, despite uh, uh, pledging support for public broadcasting in Canada, once he actually got into power, uh, his government started to uh, to reduce the funds that the Parliament of Canada was investing in, in Canadian public broadcasting. And this led a group of people to place a, uh, a two-page spread ad mm -hmm. in the, uh, the most important Canadian English language newspaper, the Globe and Mail, uh, calling on Mulroney to uh, have a thoughtful deliberation about what uh, what he was doing rather than just making helter-skelter uh, uh, cuts that would damage uh, Canadian public broadcasting. That ad was um, arranged by a few people of whom I was one and about 1,200 people signed it and their names appeared uh, and uh, the, the Globe and Mail gave us a preferential rate because they supported the cause. And you're still fighting to keep uh, Canadian broadcasting on the air, right? Yeah, the, the, the mission of the Friends yeah. is, to, uh, yeah. is to defend and to enhance uh, Canadian content uh, in our whole audiovisual system, that's radio, television, and online. Oh, yeah. And the, uh, the, the, the context for that, uh, people outside Canada might not be aware that the 80% the of Canadians who are English speaking, mm -hmm. um, they are inundated with uh, programming that they very much like. Uh, from the United States, entertainment programming. And the struggle ever since uh, there has been broadcasting in Canada has, to has it's been to maintain a certain amount of shelf space, if you like, for Canadian content uh, on, on, our, on our radio, TV, and, and online. And that's, that's what the Friends engages in. So it is dwindling. Um, why? Uh, Canadian content dwindling? Is that your question? Yeah. Uh, no, it, it isn't. It isn't. Uh, okay, good. It, it's because of a, uh, an eight-decade struggle to maintain and, uh, and enhance Canadian content uh, that, the, uh, that in the English-speaking part of Canada, uh, Canadian content is, uh, is quite strong. Uh, it's dominant in non-fiction programming like news and current affairs. Uh, where it's weaker is in entertainment programming because of the uh, huge impact of, uh, of, of Hollywood. Uh, a friend of mine used to call it satellite rain. <laughs> oh no. You, your friends is dubbed as being a watchdog. What is that? What do you do? Well, uh, watchdog, I guess, is a, 
is a metaphor, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, it, 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 obviously, we're not canines. Uh, <laughs> we, we are an independent watchdog in the sense that we, we keep an eye out. Um, if, you, if you visit an airport, you'll always see one of those radar dishes that's turning around and in a 360-degree arc, keeping an eye on uh, airplanes. And, and we're doing the same thing in our audiovisual system. We're keeping an eye on all the factors there uh, trying to uh, intervene selectively to defend and, and enhance uh, Canadian content. That's that's what we do. Who's the head honcho of uh, Friends? Uh, I am. Oh, you uh, are. I'm the I am their spokesperson. Ah, so you're doing a very good job over the years. I have been a mem member or <clears throat> online with you people and helping you out whenever I can. So I'm well, glad. That's, that's much appreciated, Patty, and uh, you have good company. There are there are about a third of a million Canadians, the 364,000 is our best estimate, that support our cause, not all with money. About 20% of them actually invest their, their, their hard-earned dollars to support our work, but the rest take action. They, they write letters to our the equivalent of our FCC, it's called the CRTC, or they write the Prime Minister or their Member of Parliament, they, they do things. So we have a quite a core of active volunteers and it's nice to know that you are um, an expatriate supporter. Well, expatriate? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, there are a lot of Canadians down here as well. That's what, who I'm trying to reach out to, you know. Um, mm -hmm. We what? sometimes joke that uh, Los Angeles is the fourth largest Canadian city, Patty. You betcha. Uh, because there are support about a million people uh, in the in the greater Los Angeles County uh, that uh, come from Canada. And all of the shows that Canada, CBC, and all have done over the years with BBC and all that, excellent shows. And uh, you, you probably are aware that uh, uh, Canadian, the, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, our national public broadcaster, its uh, programming in radio is carried on something like uh, 160 NPR stations around the United States at the moment. Oh, so we're reaching out to everyone, not just Canada. So uh, what, are, what is your goals and priorities then? Well, um, we have about three. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have more than three, it's very hard to focus. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, one is we, we keep we keep uh, we keep track of um, of the the behavior of the national public broadcaster and other public broadcasters in the country, um, and we keep a, a very close eye on the government of Canada, uh, which is responsible for uh, investing tax dollars to support that cause. Mm. That's one. Uh, and, and the second thing is that we, we keep an eye on the private sector broadcasters uh, to, uh, to make sure that they're doing something for Canada at, at, at the same time. And the third thing is that we're very concerned about the concentration of ownership mm. in the private sector, which reduces the diversity, the, uh, the diversity of opinion, the diversity of voices, puts too much control in the hands of uh, too few people. That's basically our, our agenda. We, um, we are not trying to keep foreign, uh, and that includes American, programming out of Canada. We think it's a wonderful thing. In fact, if you're interested, I would take you into that a little bit. Uh, many Canadians have more access to American programming than Americans do. I'll, I'll unpack that if you like. But, uh, but what, we, what we want is to make sure that a, a certain share of the programming that Canadians can choose if they like uh, is in fact coming from Canada. Sure. And so that's our, um, that's our mission. And uh, the, the metaphor that I use is, is akin to going to a, uh, you know, a, a big food store and walking down the aisles. And uh, what, what we want is uh, shelf space for Canada mm -hmm. in our audiovisual system. We don't want only Canada. We think Canadians can enjoy programming out of Hollywood and from around the world, but we want uh, to make sure that it, 
that they have available uh, certain Canadian choices. That is good, because <clears throat> Canada has to, uh, we're, we're strong like every other country, and we want our culture to maintain itself. To, uh, to Just to give you an illustration <clears throat> of the kind of thing that we do practically to make that happen, uh, a long time ago, when Ronald Reagan was president, uh, he came to Toronto for a meeting of what, what was then called uh, the G7 Summit, mm -hmm. uh, and Prime Minister Mulroney was hosting it, and Reagan was here, and the leaders of uh, you know Britain, France, Germany, uh, it, uh, Italy, and and Japan, I guess, were in in town, and we took a full page ad in the in the, the national newspaper, the Globe and Mail, mm -hmm. which is distributed throughout the country, and our ad had a picture of a an attractive young girl about 10 years old sitting on top of the television set and just smiling at the at the the audience and the headline at the top said a foreign power has control of Michelle's mind for 725 hours a year oh boy. and that was drawn from a statistic that the average uh, 10 year old kid in Canada was watching 900 hours of television and 725 hours of that in a given year were American program. So we, we just we, we do things like that to draw attention to the, the kind of audiovisual colonization of a country like Canada by the huge American entertainment system. And you are a profit or non for profit organization? We're we're not non profit, <clears throat> but we're not we're not a charitable organization. And in, in Canada the significance of that is that if a, um, I'm trying to remember the American equivalent, but if a if a taxpayer gives uh, a, a gift, say a hundred bucks, to a charity, mm -hmm. let's say to a church or to the Red Cross or something like that, uh, they get a benefit when they when they complete their income tax return. Not the Friends of Canadian Broadcasting. We 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 give no tax receipts, and that's because we are nonpartisan, but but political. In the in the common law sense of political, which is trying to influence public opinion and uh, public policy and decisions of government, so we, we so we we raise three or four million dollars a year from Canadians and obviously from some people outside the country, but that's not a big proportion. Yeah. And and we uh, and we use that money uh, to advance our uh, our nonpartisan policy goals. How do you raise the monies then? Do you do advertising or? Uh, we raise it entirely uh, from individuals. Uh, we don't accept, by policy, we don't accept money from any government oh. or from any, uh, any entity that has a license to broadcast in Canada. So we, we get, uh, the largest gift we got last year was $5,000 out, out of three or four million. <clears throat> so we get we, about 50,000 gifts come in that sustain our work. And we, we, we reach people through uh, the postal system, mm -hmm. by telephone, right. and increasingly uh, on um, over, digitally, over the internet. Um, and in fact, now the, the, the largest source of support for our work is people who uh, uh, support us so strongly that they agree to make monthly uh, contributions. That's it's nice. a very efficient way of fundraising because 98 cents of every dollar just gets into our bank account and we can we can use it to actually do what we think is important. Uh, do you have a home office? Uh, I, I work out, you're looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is my home. And there are about uh, maybe 20, 25 people who work for friends, uh, mostly um, on a part-time uh, basis. They, they contribute their expertise. And they're they're around the country, you know. They're some of them are in Ottawa, others are in Montreal, um, and some are in Western Canada. But uh, we, we're a, we're a virtual organization. We don't have a uh, you know a, 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 an office that people go to and sit down and work. We do have a, a postal address, and somebody once said to me, "I'm not going to send you any more money until you can assure me you're not wasting money on a." on an expensive address on Bloor Street. It's, a, it's like, I don't know, like Fifth Avenue in New York. <laughs> and so, uh, and I, I sent back a little postcard and said, uh, 
well, actually, I can't give you that assurance because we do have an office on Bloor Street, but it's only uh, six inches high and 12 inches wide and 18 inches deep. In other words, it's a, it's a, it's a post box. Yeah. Do you have a website? Yeah. It, oh. And it's got a very simple address, and I'd in, in, invite anybody who's uh, listening or watching to, to give it a visit. It's friends.ca. Yeah. That's short but sweet. It took a long time to get it that short and sweet, but uh, yeah. it works. You're doing good. I'm pleased. Uh, are you more and more, are more and more Canadian dramas, comedies being produced in Canada uh, than you? Yeah, uh, if you take a, a, a multi-decade uh, look at it, I would say uh, Canadian fiction and entertainment programming is getting stronger. That's good. Um, I just watched a really beautiful uh, tribute to the late Leonard Cohen uh, oh. last night. I was watching uh, on the French language network of the CBC. It's called Radio Canada. Right. And uh, it was probably the best program I'd seen in 15 years, um, a big uh, entertainment program out of Montreal. Uh, so I'm still on a high from the, the quality of some of the, uh, the programming that uh, I've seen recently. How can we get Canadian, more Canadian shows than that down here in the United States? In the United States? Yeah. yeah. How can we do that? We did some research, uh, and, and by the way, one of the key things we do is, is research. I'll tell you more about how we spend the money if you like, but we did some research about 10 years ago, and I, I have to tell you that I don't have any more recent research than that, but, I, but you might be interested in this statistic. It, what I was doing was uh, measuring American, we call them border stations. These would be the stations that broadcast on the northern you know, side of the United States that are the stations that are picked up uh, either by, by cable or directly by antennas in Canada. And, and so we were measuring what's available to people and it turned out it was about 50 million Americans who are kind of scattered along. Think of uh, Vermont. Uh, think of uh, Think of uh, uh, Detroit, uh, think of uh, Seattle, you know, yeah. places like that. And so uh, among those 50 million Americans, we found that 98% of the programming that was available to them was American in origin. Right. And to English-speaking Canadians, 66% uh, of the programming that was available to them was of American origin and only 33% Canadian. So we are a lot more open than the American audiovisual system. Now I think uh, cable and uh, digital and uh, things are opening up the United States to programming from around the world, uh, but, uh, but in, in some ways the United States is more, its entertainment and its news systems are more insulated from the outside world than yeah. other countries like Canada. Mm -hmm. That's bad. just my observation. Well, we I interviewed Yannick Bisson of Murdoch Mysteries several yeah. years ago. <clears throat> and he was talking about his acting and also uh, the show that he was starring in, still starring in. And, you know, I tried sharing that with that that beautiful interview down here, but there's a copyright they wouldn't allow. Yeah. And that's... Well, it, it, copyright is uh, intellectual property law. You know, it's, it's, it's very important. It's, uh, it's a, you know, the, the biggest company in the world, Apple Computer, would be nothing if it didn't have a lot of patents. And uh, copyright is kind of the same thing as that. And it does yeah. interfere uh, with, the, with the movement of programming. Uh, but you can get a lot of programming uh, on the internet um, I, YouTube. Uh, by just poking around. Yeah. Way. Well, we have it on YouTube, and a lot of other places are watching it, but they can't watch the YouTube here in the United yeah. well, States. Well, you mentioned Murdoch Mysteries. It's it's one of the Canadian origin programs that I'd say is is most successful around the world today. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's earning revenue for its uh, for its uh, producers. Um, from export sales, uh, and that is that is a good thing. Uh, but but we also have to keep an eye on that kind of thing because with a lot of programming, uh, what you get is uh, what you get is 
uh, if uh, let, let's take an example of the the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation um, selling its programming to NPR. Mm. But what you get then is that that the the Canadian broadcaster, the on air person, is often thinking about the American audience and doing less Canadian stuff because of the export sales, and uh, and that's a concern too because we we want to make sure that that Canadian broadcasters are are focusing on Canada. You know. Yeah, first, mm. and then whatever afterwards, right? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so uh, you had a you have a board of directors. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm one of them. There are mm -hmm. ten people from around the country that uh, are are the board of directors of Friends. So, to become a member of this board, is it by election, or can anyone join? Or uh, no, the, we we don't we do not we have, we have different classes of membership, but the the voting membership uh, for our board of directors. Is a is a, a limited number of voting members. Yeah. Uh, and the, the reason we do that is uh, you can gobble up a lot of resources um, in pursuit of, of a kind of democratic goal that you would that we would rather spend um, in trying to achieve our objectives. Uh, there's no you know if we hold hold an annual meeting somewhere uh, wherever we are in the country. 95% of the people can't come to it. Do you know what I mean? And that's yeah. the, the, it's the problem with a, a Canada wide. I mean, we we have we have uh, six time zones in Canada. It's it's that big a country, and so uh, we we uh, we don't um, the accountability we have is that we could do nothing without the financial support of those people we were just talking about. Mm. And if they're if they're not happy with us, they won't give money. And, and because they do give money, uh, it means they do uh, support what we, we're doing, and they care more about the content of what we do than, than uh, the process. That's true. That's true. Did you ever have to go to court to uh, um, pass Yeah, out? actually, uh, I, we did, um, and it has to do with libel laws. Mm -hmm. um, about 20, I, I guess I would prefer not to mention the name of the individual, although, oh, yeah. uh, although I could, it's, you know, somebody searching on the internet could probably find this, but, uh, but the, the chair uh, at the time of the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission, and for an American, uh, just, you have to think FCC, it's the same kind of thing, yeah. actually um, libeled me and the friends on, on CBC Television, coast to coast, um, a little bit before uh, uh, Christmas of a, of, a, of a year, many years ago, and we, we had to. Uh, we didn't actually make it to court, but we would have gone to court. And our our, our lawyer got an apology uh, from the chairman of the CRTC for what he said to, about the friends. So that's the one time we've been close to court, and we we have to defend our uh, uh, our ability to to post things on our website. From time to time, that's our intellectual property, and the Copyright Act is uh, is one of the things we do. And I have to be very careful, and I've become quite uh, knowledgeable about uh, libel and slander. Yeah, uh, I have a very very intelligent lawyer. When he whispers in my ear, he'll say, "Ian, there's always a way to say it. You just have to think hard about what you're saying to avoid." Uh, uh, stepping into the territory where libel is uh, is likely to uh, to take place. With me being a producer of my TV show for the last eight years, only, for the last eight years, I have to be the same. I have to mm -hmm. be careful what I speak be in case I get sued. <laughs> well, any of your uh, listeners uh, or viewers, um, I would say what I have learned over the years is that uh, you know a thought forms in my mind maybe five to seven seconds before it comes out of my mouth. And in that period, <laughs> I have to have a little, uh, metaphorically, a little filter going on to make sure that I um, am careful what I say. So uh, you don't have any... Uh, how about the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation itself? How do you uh, deal with them? Well, 
we are strongly supportive of the work that their um, that their dedicated employees, journalists, uh, producers, you know, uh, actually do. But we're often very critical of the senior management of the corporation. Mm. Um, for example, uh, I am often in a position to criticize the president of the CBC. His name is Hubert Lacroix. Yeah. Um, and he was appointed um, by former Prime Minister Stephen Harper um, 10 years ago. In fact, just this week, he's entering his 11th year wow. as president of the CBC. And, and uh, I, I would criticize him uh, by saying that prior to his appointment, he had no experience in, uh, in leading a broadcasting organization, mm -hmm. in, uh, in programming, in scheduling, all of the things that, that work. He was appointed, he was a mergers and acquisitions lawyer out of Montreal, and he was appointed um, for some reason uh, without uh, those qualifications. And then we found out that in the year before he was appointed, that he had contributed $2,000 uh, to Mr. Harper's party, the Conservative Party of Canada. And so we sort of went on a, a jihad as a result of that and, and, and other members of the board being politically um, involved uh, to, uh, to, to demand uh, that the National Public Broadcaster, the CBC, have... Uh, have have arms length uh, people running it, sitting on its board, it, its governance, and I, I'm happy to say that the uh, the current government of Canada, led by uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, uh, actually adopted our position in the weeks before the last general election in Canada, and um, and and they are now uh, working on a process to appoint new leadership to the CBC uh, that they call uh, a merit based an independent of patronage basis. And so that's a major reform that we have had some influence in achieving. So you could be able to work uh, together yeah. as a whole. Oh, yeah. that's good. I, and uh, I have some confidence that that, um, that, that, that that matter, the governance of the CBC, we're making some progress on that. Oh, well, listen, this has been a very interesting half hour of talking about friends of Canadian broadcasters. Thank you, Ian, for taking. It's been a, it's been a pleasure, Patty, and uh, I I um, I hope we'll keep in touch. We will indeed. Take care. So God bless and uh, have a great year. Yeah, happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Take care. Bye bye. us all.